the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. You know, somebody, I was, I've been in an argument for the last two days with some jerk on freaking Twitter about that King, that Cliff Kingsbury is better than Lincoln Riley. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> okay. No, he isn't. The guy Rick, couldn't win at Texas Tech when the Big 12 wasn't good. And he had Rick, Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield then. Yeah, Cliff couldn't Cliff never made it to a, a major bowl either, did he? I mean, never, he never. He never won though. more than seven games Not, at Tech. Far be it for me to take up for Lincoln Riley, but Lincoln Riley didn't me make too. it to the playoffs. Hey man. He didn't make it to the playoffs. So I I, I have no love for Lincoln, and I will tell you now that Cliff is I'm way just saying, worse. I'm just Cliff saying, is Lincoln, way worse. yeah, Lincoln's a lot better than Cliff. I think I don't even know. Just, I, when they made it hard, I didn't understand. As a matter of fact, if you go back and listen to one of my podcasts, I can't remember which one was on. I was talking about Cliff was going to get fired this year. Welcome back to the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins, and if you love college football, you are definitely in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. Folks, this is just one segment that I'm clipping out of the more than hour and 30 minutes of conversation that I had on the show with the one and only outlaw of college football, Mr. Jesse Paul Clark. We talked about a wide range of topics, everything from skittle shitting knuckleheadedness out at the University of Southern California to big headedness in the form of that ever inflating ego of Mike Gundy that continues to run off football players that were formerly in his program at Oklahoma State, and even the basketball greatness of players like Larry Bird and Michael Jordan in comparison to LeBron James and the new guard of the NBA. Yeah, this was indeed a wide-ranging talk between two eh, outspoken college football content creators that hold very little back when it comes to their opinion about the names, faces, and personalities of those that make up that sport we love so dear. So sit back and enjoy this segment of the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast with our special guest, the outlaw of college football, and then you can thank me later. Say about Oklahoma, about not being able to recruit to Norman for whatever stupid reason you want to come up with. Oklahoma's a blue blood. I remember you did your your top five of all time a month or so ago, right? right. And you had them like number three or whatever right. it was. I didn't really disagree with that. I, and I believe that Alabama's definitely number one. But an SC falls in there where they fall in there too. I That's feel right. like no doubt about it that – if you if you're in if you're in anybody's top five that knows anything about college football, don't tell me that you can't recruit at that school. Don't tell me that. Those are blue blood programs. And if you can do it at, at Austin, why can't you do it at Norman? When they've well, won more, they've won that, more. The USC fan base, man, to me is it's so unrealistic. Unrealistic. And they just they're so they used strong. to losing lately. The Todd Hilton years and everything that happened after Pete has made them so – and even well, – hey, man, they, they strong, wanted Brad, to listen. And, and they talk out of both sides of their mouth, man. They'll, see, they'll be acting like when, when they're losing, they're like, well, we're not going to watch it because we got better things to do. They still don't right. watch them. Well, that makes you a, not a very good fan base. You're talking about, oh, we're, we're loyal fans, but you're not. You're not there when they're losing, man. 
And they were there when they were winning, season. man. They didn't fill that stadium once this season. Not and here's once. another excuse they'll use. They'll be like, well, Oklahoma and Alabama, they're in small towns, and that's all y'all got to do. Y'all do realize that when people graduate from Alabama and Oklahoma, they don't stay in Norman and Tuscaloosa. They move throughout the country mm-hmm. to Seattle, all the way to Miami, to Boston, and they make it to games. So yeah. don't give me that crap about it's this. Expensive they, as hell to go to watch TV. college football games. If you've been to a college football game in the last five years, you paid through the nose to go, even for regular right. season games. Right. Well, I'm saying that these, yeah. all these graduates and alumni live in big cities where they got other choices. They got other things they could do. Yeah. But they come because they're a good fan base. USC's not right. a good fan base. They're a bunch of bandwagons, man. They don't mm-hmm. care about that. They'd be rather be out at a transgender volleyball tournament or something in Santa Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> if if USC's not in contention for a national title. If they lose yeah. three or four games, they disappear, man. Yeah, man. And I'm telling you, the last home game that I saw them have, I want to say it was – would have been – it was a decent team. I want to say it was like Washington State maybe. Or, you do realize that USC did not beat a team this year with double-digit wins, right? Mm-hmm. And they almost lost. They they should have lost that game to to Oregon State. And they yeah. didn't have to play Oregon, and they didn't have to play Washington. They didn't have exactly. to play either one of them. How exactly. they, this was it was a perfect storm of good for Lincoln going into that Utah game, the second one. Perfect storm of oh man, overachieving. He was like, we're ahead of schedule. All this bull crap. Of course you are. You ain't yeah, you before. were definitely ahead of. They got lucky, man. And had it not been for if. If Oregon doesn't spit the freaking bit against Oregon State, which I don't know how the hell that happened, they were way ahead. <laughs> if they don't do that, they get they still lose their ass in in that conference championship game. But I knew damn good and well when Utah got in, I was like, they're gonna beat them again. It's gonna happen because Kyle Whittingham. We've talked about this before. He's the most underrated coach in the country. He is. I would love for him to be the guy that succeeds Saban. Right, because he doesn't have to recruit at number one anymore. He doesn't have to do it. He the guy gets mostly three stars out of Texas to go to That's Utah, right. and they win. They just win. He gets tough guys that fit his system, like Cam Rising. That dude, man, I love Cam Rising. That guy's an <laughs> alpha dog. Just loves it. And That's he a, goes. That's a name. That's a name made for sports and movies. <laughs> Cam Rising? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, could be, he could be a dang movie star like The Rock or something after his playing days. When he got his helmet knocked off in that damn game and popped right back up and knew to look in the camera from there and smile, I was like, I love that guy. <laughs> I love it. He popped up like it wasn't nothing and smiled right into the camera. I was like, watch, they're going to beat the shit out of USC now. And they did. You know, and that was that was awesome, man. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. I loved seeing every second of that, man. Another double-digit lead. Yeah, well, it was 17-3, and it yep. could have been 24 to 3 real easy. And they, yep. they screwed up. They had that interception or fumble, whatever it was, right <laughs> then. And you're like, uh-oh. I said, watch, here it is. They're about to lose. Next thing you know, freaking man, they implanted their foot right in Caleb Williams' ass from that moment. And that was the other thing. Lincoln couldn't even do anything to protect his his quarterback. Didn't do anything to protect him and kept trotting him out there when the dude could barely walk. It was a joke. I loved it. I loved every second of it. And that's the whole thing. I'm going to say this one more time about these SC fans. They hate, they want to hate on, on me. I've gotten a ton of the hate. They hate on you for saying what's true. The bottom line is this. We've seen this movie before. We have seen this movie before. As an Oklahoma fan, I watched him three times get to the conference championship game. And I've said this a hundred times. Oklahoma would not have won six conference championships in a row if Texas wasn't a dumpster fire during that whole time. (laughs) And it was a dumpster fire. That was, it was a watered down conference that perfect. I mean, Lincoln Riley has, has sailed under perfect skies up until now. He's been able to hide behind it because of the fact he does do great with offense. There's no arguing that. But when it boils down to it, when they got, we watched it every time. Aside from the Georgia game, they got the crap kicked out of them in those freaking playoff games. The crap kicked out of them. It wasn't close. And it was because you knew they couldn't play defense. He wasn't recruiting it well. 
They they never were getting anywhere close to a five, and they didn't get a five star close to coming this season to USC either. And you're not gonna. And you've got the entirety of California is supposed to be your oyster if you're Lincoln Riley at USC. Yeah. <laughs> and yet you can't get the you can't get a defense that can help you compete. Toughness is what matters when you get to those big games. Utah's about toughness. You know, the one, they may not have the same amount of talent as you, but they're going to out tough your ass. One of the you better know? defensive players that Lincoln coached, Perry on Winfrey, gives Lincoln absolutely no respect. That should tell you something right there. He said, I went to the, I guess it was the Senior Bowl or one of them all star games, and these NFL coaches told me, why would you coach like that? Why would you coach to do those things? Mm-hmm. And he realized that. Uh, Lincoln them almost screwed him on his NFL career. So that's why I don't know defensive players going to go out there because Perion Winfrey, who played under him, is railing his ass. <laughs> and he's not the only one. When everybody started getting on uh, Venables and, and his defensive staff about why don't you dumb down this defense a little bit, and there there's something to be said for that, I guess. But it also could something to be said for do your job. As the freaking as a player, do your job. You know that he was run it again, run it again, run it again until you get it right. And if you've ever coached anything at all, even from kids on up, you can coach it right all day long. Sometimes they just don't do it. It still becomes about the player doing their job. And the the truth of the matter was, none of these kids, or not none of them, but most of these kids did not have. They just weren't set up for it, They and they didn't buy into it. And part of that, that's where I think if Venables did anything wrong, he should have went out and got more of those defensive linemen guys and went ahead and pulled some of those dudes that he wasn't too sure if they were going to fit his you know, culture or whatever. I think you had to. And I think this year he's obviously you know, he's doing some of that. But I can tell you, you've never seen a defensive group get you know as a group you've never seen this good of a defensive uh recruiting class at oklahoma Uh, as sooner fans i know that anybody who's paying any attention we're way way excited about it i know that saban was trying to get levy to come to to tuscaloosa and he turned it down because of jackson arnold and i guess uh i guess venables decided that he was going to allow him to be a little more let's be more aggressive so he let him do it Somebody, I was, I've been in an argument for the last two days with some jerk on freaking Twitter about that King, that Cliff Kingsbury is better than Lincoln Riley. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> okay. No, he isn't. The guy Cliff, couldn't win at Texas Tech when the Big 12 wasn't good. And he had Cliff, Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield then. Yeah. Cliff couldn't, Cliff never made it to a, a major bowl either, did he? I mean, never, he never. He never won more than seven games not, at Tech. Far be it for me to take up for Lincoln Riley, but Lincoln Riley did make it to the playoffs. Hey, man. He did make it to the playoffs. So I, I, I have no love for Lincoln, and I will tell you now that Cliff is I'm way just saying, worse. I'm just Cliff saying is Lincoln, way worse. Yeah, Lincoln's a lot better than Cliff, I think. I don't even understand. I, when they made it hard, I didn't understand. As a matter of fact, if you go back and listen to one of my podcasts, I can't remember which one was on, I was talking about Cliff was going to get fired this year. He and should he, have he gotten got fired, fired before this year. They it, they re-upped his contract so that they had to pay him more on the way out. That was dumb. The the Cardinals are or they've been stupid for a long time. But I was and then that knife on on Kyler Murray's back about the whole studying and all that other stuff. That I bet you that has Cliff Kingsbury's freaking prints all over it. You know, no. so that was a joke, man. All that crap he said about Colt Colt running his offense better. That was just trying to save his butt because, again, he was the same dude. He could never win. I think he won, what, nine games last year. K-1 got hurt because they went 8-0 or whatever, and then so only one game, I think. Yeah, dude, it's a joke, man. The guy never won more than seven games, and he had Pat Mahomes as a quarterback. Pat Mahomes was – Pat Mahomes was a later pick than Mitch Trubisky because of (laughs) Cliff Kingsbury. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure Kansas City, appreciate, Kansas City appreciates the hell out of that, but I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. But, and you know, these, these teams like the Cardinals, man, usually when they hire an offensive guru like that, what they'll do is go direct opposite direction when they hire again. So they'll probably hire a defensive minded coach this time, but it, it would be pretty funny if they went out and hired Lincoln Riley. 
They've been talking about it, but and I think that, that obviously Kyler would probably appreciate that. And I think it'd be he, hilarious just because USC would lose their shit over it. It would be, oh, they would lose their minds. He run off after one season. Yeah. <laughs> and you were talking about possibility of him going to Denver. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder. I didn't really see it, but I I wouldn't be that surprised if anything Lincoln does. It when you start getting exposed. I don't know, though. The thing is, is that they owe him so much money. I don't know how you really do it. I don't know how you really do it. And nobody's going to pay that that buyout. You know what I mean? There's no way. I, I, I think he goes at least another couple of years and and chokes it away. And when they get ready to go, I mean, or after maybe one year in the Big Ten, I could see him running. I And I still believe what you were talking about, about the A&M connection. I think that that's happening, man. I think that at some point Texas A and M is going to make that that higher. It's just too much money owed to Jimbo right now, and too much owed to USC. I just that only reason that probably didn't already happen. I think that uh, I just don't think Jimbo's happy there. He'll tell you he's happy there, but man, College Station is a weird place, man. It's like a cult yeah, down there. They get mad at me when I call them that, man. But you know, any place that's got all male cheerleaders, man, there's something wrong with that, man. Something weird. And look, <laughs> hey, man, those midnight chant things that they got going on, man, and now that they're starting to film that crap and let it out, it's scary. It's scary. I saw this one video. No, it's weird, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I saw um, a video of the cadets in the stands holding their private parts, hollering at the top of their lungs. I'm like, what the hell is that all about, man? I don't know. And it's just like some cult there. stuff. <laughs> they're weird, man. They're and, a weird you know, group. Jimbo is from West Virginia. So if West Virginia gets rid of Neil Brown, it wouldn't that pay him as much, but he'd have a lot less stress and wouldn't have as much pressure to win at West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And he'd be back home. So Yeah, I understood that. Uh, when you when you said that at first, I was like, huh. I wasn't sure what to think. And then I, the more I thought about it, I was like, it makes sense. It may I mean, at this point, they're gonna have to pay him. I mean, he may not get all whatever he's owed. I mean, they're not they weren't gonna pay him 90 million and let him walk. They no. weren't going to do that. No. But had he has said 50, then maybe, yeah. you know, I yeah. could see them doing that um, because they do have the money. It's not a money's not an issue at all, at all, at all down there. But if they're not wanna... just going to hand him that cash and let him walk out the door, particularly when they're dumping all this money into NIL funds and allowing them to recruit like that. They lost all those guys that were five stars, you know, this season. But they replenished most of them. I mean, they got David Hicks coming in. They dumped a bag, and everybody kept saying he's Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. And then he picks A and M. It was clear that A and M. That's how they're recruiting. They are using that money as, you know, they are using it as an enticement. That's why I think that it's well, stupid to not. I think the rule's dumb because they're not going to enforce it. And so you might as well just say it's make it be part of the enticements. We don't care. But that way, you at least know what the number is. You know. Well, going back to USC for a second, uh, me and you talked about this off the air. They, even their administration is a burning dump bin, man. I mean, they're out there worrying about some of the pettiest stuff, man. They banned the word "field" from being used because they said it had uh, negative connotations to racism and and uh, bad. The word vibe "field." Field. Vibe, yeah, the word "field," like. Football field, Field of Dreams, the movie, that kind of thing. Huh. And I guess they're going – and they wanted to replace it with some word called Practimus or something. I can't remember how it was said, but I guess we'd call the movie Practimus Dreams or something or, you know. Man, this has got me – Can't call it football right field. I guess we'd just call it a football meadow or something. Maybe you had, <laughs> you know, and then on the big screen up there, you can have that, that – um, lead up for Little House of the Prairie when that little girl's running down the meadow and she falls down or some shit. And what are you supposed to call it, man? You can't call it a football field. I guess you get to call it a football meadow or, or whatever, man. I don't know. I don't get these people, man. They, they, they worry about understand. some of the pettiest stuff, man. And Yeah, they don't care about it. him winning. It doesn't matter people about him it. winning, I guess. But People see it. Recruits see that, and they're like, y'all are weird. You know, and you go into the city of L.A., and L.A. is not what L.A. used to be. You know, L.A. was glitzy and Hollywood back in the day when they had the Lakers in their prime, the Magic Johnson, all that good stuff. But nowadays, it's just not 
It's I think most people are getting thing, sick man. of movie stars even just because of all the political, the the way that they go so political. Yeah. You know, I'm so like, many of these, so many of these movie stars are so out there. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I just want to watch a movie. I don't care what your political views are. Keep it to yourself, man. <laughs>